welcome to Web User Group. Uh, this is your opportunity to uh, yell at me. I am the product manager for the front end web properties that includes the marketplace, join, um, slcom, lindenlab.com, um, things along those lines. I also do a lot of the back end stuff too, um, particularly around payments and, and tooling. So uh, I'm able to answer questions or field concerns about those as well. Um, but that being said, those are our guidelines and those are the rails. Anything outside of that, um, not only am I not qualified to answer, but I will not even try. Uh, so if you have, for example, governance questions or viewer related questions or, um, you know, like, why is there so much lag in Second Life? I honestly don't know the answer to that um, and cannot help you with that. So uh, as long as we all agree on the rules, uh, I think we can go forward. Um, to answer Lucy's question, because I think that's uh, appropriate, there was no May meeting because I was on vacation. Dun, da, da, da. Um, so, neener neener, I get to take vacations too. Um, so that's why there was no May meeting. But I'm here now. It was nice, yes, thank you. Um, so yeah. Usually we start this out with a uh, kind of recap of what the team has been doing for the last month um, and uh, a little bit of a preview of what the team will start working on next month. Um, today that is actually fairly straightforward, uh, so I will just give that recap now. We have been working very hard on Premium Plus um, and the new offering there, and also the search uh, relevant stuff. So this is all stuff that we've been working on for quite some time. Uh, this is not new information for people that have been here before. Um, so I don't expect this to take too much uh, time, but for those of you who have not been here before, and it does appear that there's quite a list of you, um, Premium Plus is a new subscription level that we are offering that will be fully announced during SLB. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Patch and Grumpity are doing um, interviews on the, I believe, the 18th and 19th to coincide with the birthday, uh, wherein they will talk all about all of the things that you possibly want to know about Premium Plus. So that being said, I know I have promised that I would give details here and they squashed on me. Uh, they want to control that message. So I cannot actually give details here. You can go blame Grumpity and I highly suggest that you do. Well, they're not here today, but like go send them messages, go talk to Patch, go yell at him. Um, yeah, go find them. Um, I can say certain things though. Uh, we we do we are going to uh, release with a promotional price. Um, so you know the the first month uh, is a really good time to get in. Um, things that I have mentioned before, but are worth reiterating. The the type of stuff that we are um, increasing for Premium Plus uh, is you know stipends. Um, you know, land uh, allotment, um, the uh, group, uh, like how many group limits. Uh, so, you know, like if you currently, you can join X amount of groups with Premium Plus, it'll be a lot more. Uh, so if you want to, um, you know, join more groups, well, guess what? This one will be there for you. Um, we're looking at um, upload fees for textures and animations and sounds and things like that. Um, those will all be going uh, significantly down on Premium Plus. Um, that uh, we are also looking at um, things for the future. Uh, so that's not an exhaustive list. That's just kind of some of the highlights of some things that we'll be doing. But I also wanted to talk about some things that we're looking at for the future. Um, for, for Premium Plus, things like, um, you know, new region types, uh, you know, new linen home types, um, priority access to, to certain areas, um, potentially some discounts on things like name change, 
Uh, we're also talking about mobile uh, applications and maybe some of those will be discounted for Premium Plus. Um, so we're fully committed for the long haul to continue to offer really cool stuff into the Premium Plus product uh, even after the initial release. Um, so we've got a lot of things on our, on our future list, um, but we also think that the stuff that's on the current list is pretty cool. Um, let's see, your prorated was mentioned in October 2019. Yeah, so that was three years ago. We've done a lot of stuff in the last three years. Um, so there you go. The, the prorated stuff is, is kind of in there. Um, Scaria, the discount on mesh uploads. So that's a future goal of ours. Uh, we would like to see the, the mesh uploads be discounted the same way, um, you know, animations and texture uploads are. Uh, that's currently not possible because they're the, um, the fees are calculated in a different way. Um, but we're looking at including that probably in the next month or two. So stay tuned on that. That won't be in time for release, but it's next on our list. So we're absolutely um, going to see a, a good reduction in mesh upload fees. Not enough groups is ever enough. Well, Larie, all I can tell you is that it's going to be a lot more. Um, so when you hit the new limit, come let me know. And we'll see if we can figure out how to do an even, even more groups for you. Even more. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect to see things like double and half or even zero uh, in certain cases. So think about those. Uh, but also, like I say, um, Patch and Grumpity uh, will be announcing the, the full release um, to coincide with SLV. It just made a lot of sense for us to do that. So there you go. When? When's SLB, Lucy? You tell me. There you go. You now have your answer. But, but, but. Yeah, they might be talking day one. You don't know that they won't. Stock their calendars. They'll be doing interviews. Um, Scaria, it may be available before the live announcement. I'm not sure about that. Uh, like I say, at my job at this point is turning over the keys to Grumpity and Patch to let them control the release and announce it however they wish. Uh, Larie, there is a price, um, absolutely. Uh, it is going to be uh, more than premium, uh, but it will be discounted in the first month. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I can't tell you the exact price. Neary, okay, so search, uh, that's right. So again, for those of you who haven't been here before, we are currently involved in a long process of trying to increase the relevance of search. Um, so we have heard loud and clear and our own metrics agree that search is not terribly useful or relevant, particularly for new users at the moment. Um, so one of the things that I did when I first started uh, on the website, um, when I took over for Kira was I said, you know, we need to improve the relevance of search. Uh, we need to actually make this a product that we can work with. So we hired um, some outside contractors to help us. We currently use an Elasticsearch instance, if you know what Elasticsearch is. So we hired um, Elasticsearch experts uh, to help us kind of identify um, how to make search more relevant. Um, and kind of teach us along the way. And they've been working hand in hand with the team for the last ooh, almost six months. Um, and what they've been developing is a essentially a relevance engine um, that will basically be watching search and uh, slowly improving it based on how it performs. 
Uh, so we're creating our own little, you know, AI machine learning, uh, yeah, search relevance engine, which I think is super cool. Now, we will also be fixing some, uh, some things right off the top. So for example, you may currently notice that sometimes you can search for something directly using its full name and you may not get that as the top result. That seems dumb. Um, so we're going to fix that. Uh, so that should all come to fruition probably in July or so, if I had to guess. Um, certainly that's when our contract runs out, so I would like to be done by then. Uh, yes, web search, that's correct. Uh, Teresa, annuals are discounted um, by 30% already. Uh, and will continue to be discounted at 30%. So uh, I'm happy to share that with you. You'll get 30% off of the annuals. And uh, if you are not uh, here in the US and you are, for example, in the EU, um, currently you will pay VAT charges on the monthly offerings, but you do not pay VAT charges on the annual offerings. And that's just because um, of the way the EU defines um, what VAT applies to. Um, and with annual, we're able to get the price low enough uh, that the the equivalent monetary value of the the offering is enough that it meets their threshold that we don't have to charge VAT. Uh, so annual is a really good deal. Not only is it cheaper than monthly on its own, but if you're subject to VAT, it is not. Let's see, what else did I go? Uh, Scaria discounted if you purchase a year. Yeah, so same answer. Um, uh, the discount, the discounted price will just be for the monthly, um, but the annual is already discounted, so it'll continue to be. Uh, okay, Jenna. So you asked about um, the marketplace variants. So that's actually where I want to spend a lot of our time today. Um, so that's a good, uh, a good kind of um, segue, I think is the word I'm looking for there. Uh, so marketplace variants. So this was one of those things that we really wanted to do, um, and we've been hearing from a lot of people it would be really cool. So we said, okay, cool, let's, let's go do it. And we put in all the infrastructure to create marketplace variants. Um, and that's all in there now. So that was actually a really big piece of work because currently the marketplace is set up on the back end, right? The databases are all set up to basically assume that every listing is its own listing. Like there is no variance, there's no style, there's no you know, extra thing there that is linked to something else. So not only do you have to rebuild and recreate the entire database and migrate everything over, which we've done, um, but you also have to teach all of the things that are looking at that database to expect you know, multiple pieces, which we have also done. Um, what we have not done is implemented on the front end. The reason why that is, and why I kind of want to start talking about today, is in order to implement it on the front end, we essentially need to overhaul and rebuild the marketplace kind of from the ground up, which means while we're doing that, why would we not overhaul and rebuild the marketplace from the ground up? Which brings me to what my questions are about today. What would that look like? What would you want it to look like? Those of you who are marketplace store owners, what do you... Like, what would you want a built, purpose-built from the ground up marketplace to look like? Those of you that are customers of the marketplace, and I expect there to be a lot of, you know, uh, crossover here. What types of features are most important to you? How would you like it to function? Specifically, how does it function today that isn't quite the way you want it to be? Um, so I kind of want to have that discussion today. Uh, and I, I expect that I want to have that discussion for the next few times that we do this because this is not going to be a one and done. Um, like, cool, I got all your in info and now we're out. Um, but yeah, I, I want to I wanna start thinking about the marketplace in terms of if we could build it all over again, 
uh, because the current marketplace implementation, as some of you may know, uh, we bought. Um, we bought it from X Street, um, and we have continued to add stuff onto it with tape and, and bubble gum uh, for the last 10 years. But, uh, you know, it, it is not necessarily purpose built uh, for the way things work today. Um, and we would love to actually do that. We look at Marketplace as the front page of, the, of, of Second Life, like on the web. Uh, if you are interacting with Second Life on the web, generally you're interacting on the Marketplace. So, yeah. Gemma, yeah, stay tuned. Um, patching company are gonna release this month. It'll be very exciting. Have fun. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Neri, uh, one of the things that is kind of funny to us is that we never would have thought that uh, Amazon's uh, UI was actually effective. <laughs> but it turns out it's pretty effective. Um, we, we've been really kind of staring at the marketplace for the last couple of months. Uh, once we started with uh, the whole variance work and said, you know, what is this, what should this actually look like? What should this really do? Um, and my job is to find out from you what you want it to do and what do you want it to look like? It can look like they will have so off. Absolutely. We'll just, we'll just make it one big huff. Harry chest and all. Uh, so Neri, that statement I think is fantastic um, and allows me to kind of start guiding this conversation a little bit. Um, when you say better controls for both consumers and creators, that's actually not very useful uh, for me. I, I get that we want it to be better, but better how? Which controls? Um, how, how are, you know, like tell me what would change exactly and why that would be better for consumers and, and um, creators. Yeah, twenty percent better. Let's let's just across the board. I want a twenty percent better marketplace. Easy peasy. Hope I am looking at your bug. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got this in there. We think we can do this. Um, just in general. through the rest here. Uh, reader livers button on the page. Which page, Teresa? Do you mean the, the item listing? Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Larie, that's a fantastic call out. Totally agree. Um, I think building it from the ground up with accessibility in mind is uh, absolutely something we should we should be doing. Do you have any particular um, like it, do you do you know, for example, that some things are not accessible? They don't work with screen readers or magnifiers, um, and if possible, you know, any solutions to that? That would certainly be helpful. Jenna, I like that. Search by perms. Um, that's pretty good. I think that's something we should just implement as part of uh, search in general. I'm all about giving more sorts and more filters, especially for information we already have available. Like a 
don't have to teach the marketplace to look for different information it already knows about perms. So we should be able to search by it. I agree. Neary, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in having the conversation about um, how we can build it so better so that creators can protect themselves better from abuse. Um, I think that's a very nuanced conversation. Um, so, you know, I, specific um, recommendations are helpful there, you know, as opposed to it needs to be better. Um, but that's one that I have to reserve, you know, just to kind of look at what the specific recommendations are because, you know, sometimes things that might help creators might, you know, unnecessarily hurt uh, consumers. And we have to balance that, right? And then as you brought up, like some things are just straight up against our terms of service. Um, demos, honey, should be, so like better way to make them um, linkable should, is actually kind of wrapped up in the whole variance work. Um, we hope to solve that with variance, which we're now calling styles. But demos would be kind of a, a version of that. Flicker style with large picks, like that. Yep. That's a good UI. Yeah, Neary, okay, so consumers have a hard time finding items that they want because the marketplace gets flooded with items of increasingly varying quality, including bogus and nonsense products. Agree. However, how do we fix that? Um, you know, that isn't hiring more people to, you know, go be the watchdog on the marketplace. I'm, I'm interested in how do, how do we control for that in a programmatic way? Uh, I don't want to create more work for my my support team. They're already working pretty hard. Oh, if we, I like that. Uh, so like kind of a collection. Does that make sense? So a way for users to create and share a list of products that could be used for certain outfits, looks, and combos. I like that. Users who bought this also bought. Larry, thank you for asking uh, some of your visual and hearing impaired friends for feedback. I appreciate that. Please bring that to next month. Uh, you all type faster than I read, so I apologize. I'm trying to read all the things. All right, near you, so I'm looking at the infusal of nonsense items is a system okay. Cupid, for instance, uses against abuse. People who leave reviews often get granted entrance to a review system of flagged listings. I'm not really sure. Let me see. Did you follow up that? Yeah. I think I need you to use more words. I know that you said you didn't want to use more words, but I'm not sure what a review system of flagged listings means. Scarla, can we have a way to protect ourselves from bogus ratings by users mad we didn't have something in their color? Um, my answer to that is yes. Uh, curious what you think that way would be. Uh, do you have a specific suggestion? Um, I mean, I, I like that as a design philosophy, you know, try and come up with ways to protect uh, people from bogus ratings. Yes, absolutely. 
curious what that would look like in your mind. <laughs> Naya. Okay, so on a 4K screen, the marketplace is a column in the center of the screen that seems to take up only about 25% of the screen space. Left and right, there's big emptiness. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we definitely want to fix that. Um, you know, I, I think that's largely a function of the fact that 12 years ago when it was written, um, it, there, there wasn't such thing as a 4K screen. So... Part of the building it from a ground from the ground up will be making sure that it appears um, sanely on large screens, small screens, mobile screens, iPads, um, you know, all of it. If you happen to have, if you are lucky to be uh, poking around on the marketplace um, in a movie theater, we want it to look good there too. Let's see. Ifrit says, I'd like a way to have shorter marketplace links without the product name in the links. Oh, we could do like a tiny link system. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to be able to do like a share this product. Um, you know, like the, the share buttons on pretty much every media platform in the world, except ours, right? Um, Reddit does a pretty good job of this, right? Like they, they give you, you know, like, how would you like to share it? Would you like, you know, the full length? Would you like a short link? Would you like a link to just the, the media itself or the actual post? I think that's a pretty, pretty slick way of doing stuff. Jenna, yeah, so we're actually trying to look for ways to um, kind of coordinate between the in-world product stuff and the marketplace better. Um, you know, we'd like for that that um, that link to exist in a more um, more robust way. Uh, right now, it's it's pretty willy-nilly, right? Like you have to create your thing uh, on the marketplace, and then you also have to create it in-world. And there's not really a good way to say that hey, these these two things are the same. For example, in yours is, you know, like, hey, would you like to see it in World? Here's a link. Um, I, I do agree with you. Um, we're looking for ways to do that. So I think as a de design philosophy, um, that makes a lot of sense to try and focus on it. Uh, Yukiko, so a more dense purchase history page so you can find older purchase items easier instead of going through ma many pages. That makes sense. Um, I, I think that's largely a UI uh, issue, you know, just trying to figure out how to, how to display that in a way that is most usable for the most number of people. Um, it's also possible that we could offer different uh, variations of how that gets displayed. Um, that's a thing. I could see, you know, like, here's a template, here's a template, here's a different template. This one has everything really condensed. This one has everything really, you know, kind of folded out so you get to see everything. But yeah, right now we, we try and stuff everything into that one page. <laughs> Scarla, a way to filter out a specific score from your search results uh, or have a column at the side and all store names which would be the entire search would be cool um, yes being able to filter out a specific store I think is um, you know or filter for specific stores too um, you know again and, and I it, it pains me to say this but you know, like you look at Amazon listings, for example, and they, they have a whole left column that allows you to do, you know, all sorts of fun filtering. I would like to at least think about how we would do that for the marketplace, too. Um, so things like, yeah, you know what? I actually don't want to see anything from this store.
Panther, let me read your question here. That's your search question. Yeah, uh, so, you know, policing tagged uh, items, honestly, this is really tough. This is a tough question to, to solve. Um, it's, it's one that's really difficult to solve programmatically. Um, and, and as you say, policing kind of tends to be the way to do it. Um, the problem with policing is that there are, you know, 5 million items on the marketplace and there's only so many Lindens. Right, like even if all of us were involved in the policing, we wouldn't be able to, you know, go through all of the items. And then, you know, like let's say I looked at all of your items yesterday, but then today you decide to change all the tags, right? Um, you know, I'm not going to necessarily go back and look at all of your items again anytime soon because I've got the other four million nine hundred and however many thousand to go. Um, so that's a tough problem to solve. Um, I don't. I don't disagree that it'd be nice if we could figure out more ways to do that. Um, but I, I will say somewhat categorically that just hiring more people to go through that stuff is off the table. You free dark mode for marketplace. Heck yeah. That's the one I want. That was my first suggestion for the marketplace. Why does it have dark mode? Larry, uh, yeah, uh, not marketplace. Text to speech in the chat would boost accessibility massively. Totally agree. Uh, unfortunately, wrong meeting for it. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything to do with in world chat. Um, but yeah, that, I don't disagree with you. Okay, Neri gave me some, some follow up here. Hmm. I see. Um, so, you, like, you're basically empowering community, uh, like, community guides, I think, is what, like, Google does with, uh, with Google Maps, right? Uh, with the reviews there. They kind of have their community guides. Um, I think that's an interesting idea. It's a thought. I think it would be, I think that's tricky to work out how that would work, but I don't think that that's wrong. Um, you know, some problems are meant to be solved. Uh, Tabby, you're asking about the inventory system. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about the inventory system. I'm so sorry. That's outside the the web purview you'd have to go to probably one of the viewer meetings Lucy, okay, yes. Um, so if you get a 100% match, uh, that should be right at the top. That's what I was saying earlier about search. Like that's, you're, you and I are aligned on that. I think it's insane that it doesn't do that. If we've got a 100% match, just put that at the top. We will do that. And that'll happen before any marketplace rewrite. That'll be part of our search overall. So expect to see that in, uh, let's call it July. Uh, if free, any possibility for using something like Sketchfab as something approximating an in-browser preview of an item? I am not familiar with Sketchfab. Give a link. 
Show me what that looks like. Neary, integration of socials into product showcase, for example, YouTube links, Insta links, etc. And thus also Sketchfab. Okay, so that's more. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do stuff like that. Um, you know, the usually there's just a lot of back and forth um, with the, the various companies, right? Like they want to have their little thumbs on stuff. Like if you include a link to Instagram, for example, they want to be able to track it. Uh, which means they put tracking pixels on your product listings, which generally we don't want. Um, but yeah, um, assuming that those contracts and, and details can be can be worked out, I don't see a particular reason why that couldn't happen. I think that's a good idea. You know, rather than try and rebuild everything, like we're not going to give you your own Instagram, but Instagram already exists. Let's leverage it. Ooh, uploaded, listed, or updated? Absolutely. Um, I, I think that should be in there, and I also want to be able to search by it. Um, I want to be able to sort my searches by, you know, hey, show me the most recent. Totally agree. Uh, Ender, you are asking, as a buyer, is it possible to add an item to a cart without opening the product page and increase shopping cart limit? I'm not sure about that first part. Add an item to a cart without opening the product page? How would you add it to the cart if you didn't open the product page? And presumably you're on the product page before you add it to the cart. What am I not getting there? within search oh I see oh, yeah okay I get that yeah that makes sense um, and then the yeah increasing the shopping cart limit absolutely there's no reason why we couldn't do that I think those limits were kind of put in early on for sanity purposes but we can figure out what the correct limit should be and it's probably larger than it currently is <laughs> okay, is it 8 million items? Sorry, honey. It's a lot. See? Dark mode. Everybody wants dark mode. I love it. Uh, Lily... Um, you're asking opportunity to purchase a homestead without a full sim anytime soon. Uh, that's not on our roadmap right now. Um, so anytime soon, I'm going to say no. Uh, that being said, it's certainly something that we are thinking about. Um, it's, a uh, it perennially comes up, um, in our, you know, kind of strategy meetings. So don't 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 lose hope i guess is is the best i can say there but no uh that's not currently on our roadmap to do sorry something we consider frequently ooh scarla i like this idea so Scarla says, what about marketplace portals in Linden region homes? So people stop shopping alone at home and socialize a bit and share what things that they found with their neighbors who also use the portal. Increasing social interaction in Belisaria, for example. Um, yeah, yeah, I love this idea. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it is no secret that the, the engine that drives Second Life is social interaction. Um, you know, people who who don't find 
their their people here usually leave, um, and people who do find their people here uh, usually stay. So um, the more we can kind of leverage that across all of our properties, I think is absolutely a direction we should be moving into. Totally love that idea. Um, just for the record, uh, and, and this should be true of, of all of these, but uh, just want to make sure that you hear it from me, uh, I am saving the back scroll of these chats. Um, I do that every time, but also for this one, so that I can go back and um, pull out all of the good ideas from here and start, you know, poking at them. So I'm not taking notes. I'm going to use your words directly. You are being recorded. Like I say, that's always true. That's not new. Any possibility of the marketplace being able to handle non-SL assets such as, such as Collada or Photoshop files for creators and modders? Ifrit, I don't want to say no to that. Um, that being said, I can't say yes. Uh, because I don't want to paint myself into a corner that it turns out is incorrect. Um, I think that that's an interesting idea and I'd like to pursue it, uh, but I can't say one way or the other. Uh, I think that there's probably very good reasons and they might be engineering related, which are solvable, and they might be more copyright related, which are not uh, why we don't currently do that. Thank you for the uh, link to Sketchfab. I will check that out later. Yeah, okay, the ability to uh, filter by compatible avatar types. Um, that one's tricky, uh, simply because how do you decide which types you allow it a filter by, um, you know, like, for example, Maitreya avatars, right? To, to use one of the things that you called out there, Jenna, um, we could potentially be um, thought to be uh, promoting Maitreya's uh, store and their avatars as kind of an official avatar for SL uh, if we if we did stuff like that. So. I'm not saying no, but it is one of those things that has to be handled very delicately. Um, I like Matreya avatars personally, but as you know, product manager for Linden Lab, um, you know, I can't say that hey, Linden Lab likes Matreya avatars and wants to you know make sure that we specifically support those. Um, simply because there's a lot of other really fine creators that make other avatars that are not Matreya, right? And we want to support them too. So. Um, there's a favoritism aspect that we have to be aware of. I don't know why my phone keeps ringing today. It's election season. Let's see. Another thing for new marketplace is the ability for store owners to set the default sort order. For example, always new is first. Uh, maybe I don't want to conflict with um, the ability for consumers to set their default sort order. Um, so I think uh, a more reasonable, um, from my perspective, is give store owners the ability to feature certain items um, that always show up at the top and then not mess around with the consumer experience of their default sort order, if that makes sense. So, you know, if the problem that you're trying to solve is like, hey, I want to make sure that all, you know, all consumers see these items first, you know, my most recent ones, for example, then oh, here's that featured listing space that lets you do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> marketplace mega mall regions um i mean to an extent those already exist uh but under that that kind of goes back to i want to try and figure out how to make the in-world uh listings and the marketplace listings more uh i want to link them more i want to figure out what is what is a good way to kind of get those more linked up um so once we have that, we could, for example, do kind of mega mall types things uh, that are both exist in world and potentially on the marketplace, right? You know, like here is Reed's mega mall uh, on Reed's region. And, you know, it has all of these various stores. And then you could also go to Reed's mega mall on the marketplace and see all of the same stuff. Um, I think that would be really cool, uh, but we're not there yet. Um, so I, I, I think that's a really good idea. Um, and, and a cool space to kind of explore in. Um, but, you know, we need to, we need to figure out how to link those items better uh, so that if you change what it looks like on the, on the website, then it also changes what it looks like in world and vice versa, right? So, you know, if my mega mall has 10 stores and one of them is, you know, Reed's fancy penguin shop, uh, but I decide to, you know, rename it to, you know, Reed's tiny penguin shop that, and I do that in world, that should be reflected on the website too. And currently we don't have the ability to do that. So got to figure that stuff out first. But good thought. I mean, like that's the direction that I want to go in. I, I really like that idea. Yeah, Lucy, you're with me on that. There's 1,500 different avatar types, right? Like, how do you choose? Um, can't list all 1,500, so that means that anybody that we do list is, you know, potentially kind of set up to be, oh, you know, Linden Lab thinks they're the favorite, right? It's a tough, it's, it's a tricky question. Honey, features would be nice. I have no idea what that means. What do you mean by features would be nice? Did you clarify that later on? Hope, I should say. Sorry. Scarla. This is a great question. Is there a way for a store owner to, uh, to know what search words were used to bring someone to the store? The answer is right now, no. However, wouldn't that be cool if we could provide that for you? Kind of uh, some analytics data. Um, because we know the answer to that question and um, we are certainly tracking things like that. Uh, so I think it would be really cool if we were able to pass that along to our content creator partners. Um, and maybe, maybe, and I don't want to, I don't want to cause a riot here, but maybe that's a premium of some variety feature, right? Something that you could pay a little extra for and get some of that analytical information. I think it would just, you know, it would allow you as content creators to better, you know, market to your, your chosen customer. And if you succeed, then, hey, we succeed. So I think that's a win-win for everybody. I like that idea. Jenna, yeah, so the marketplace would need a kind of in-world vendor system. You are thinking my language. That's exactly right. <laughs> Ender by Casper Vend. Uh, don't think we haven't talked to Casper before. We have. We like what Casper does.
Naya, uh, are we working on a new mesh body? You know, that's a good question. Um, I actually don't have the answer to that. If if I did, I would give it to you. Um, but I don't actually know that. That's uh, that's on Alexa's side of the house. Um, so that's a really good question for the the viewer group, I believe, um, or or potentially the content creator group. Lucy, I don't know how I'm gonna offer search analytics. I have no idea. Uh, just came up. Haven't thought about it. If you have particular recommendations of how we could and how you'd like that to happen, all yours. I am responding late. You're right. I've told you I'm I'm behind. But now I'm caught up. Neener neener. Uh, if free, different ways of discounting your products in store. Yep, 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 yep. Promo codes, global percentages, discounts. Yep, yep. All on the list. You are correct. I want that too. Uh, Lucy, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, right now, I'm, I'm not sure how we would deliver those analytics at all, much less whether it would be a paid service or free. I don't know. Um, or how we would how we would implement that. It's just a suggestion that it could be behind, you know, uh, it could be a paid service. I mean, if that's something that you think you would pay for, um, yeah. Uh, web and legacy search analytics it tougher only because um, I don't want to give global analytics to people um, necessarily. Uh, those can be dangerous. I think it's one thing to say, "Hey, your store, uh, this is the analytics that you know brought people to your store to this product." you know, this many people search for this type of thing in order to get you to here. Um, but to say, you know, provide that on a wider scale, like this is what all people are searching for, um, you know, and, and where they led from there, that one's tougher. Um, you know, that, that gets into data privacy and, you know, kind of stuff that we probably shouldn't be sharing. Uh, do I have the authority to green light that? Uh, I, sp I assume you mean the that is uh, whether or not um, the analytics are hidden behind a paywall of some variety. Is that the that, the that you're referring to? If it is, then yes, I do have that authority. That is something that I could potentially uh, throw into the premium plus pile, or it's something that I could argue to not be in the premium plus pile. Yeah, uh, I have the authority to uh, potentially green light the, um, the idea of analytics uh, given to store owners, things like, you know, store visit visitation stuff. Absolutely. Yep. I own that product. It's mine. Hope, good question. Okay, so Hope says, with the possibility of completely rebuilding the marketplace, what sort of timeline will we likely be looking at? Uh, and will you be trying to make sure that existing listings migrate over, not to have the hiccups that we had when we went to uh, VMM? So there's a lot in there. Um, so let me take that in, in reverse order. Yes, existing products would be migrated. Um, the way I envision it, and you know, don't hold me to this because it could change, and also I'm not an engineer, so it turns out I may not know what I'm talking about. Um, but the way I envision it is 
we would slowly build the new uh, marketplace concurrently with the old one. So the existing marketplace would still exist. Uh, it would still be usable. It would still be fully functional. Um, but as we build new features onto the new one and release those over, um, people can start using those more and more and more. Uh, so there would be a mirroring of, uh, so there'd be an, an initial migration, right? So, you know, everything will, will move over, um, but it'll just be mirrored, right? So it'll be copied. Um, and that's fairly easy for us to do because all of that data is stored in one place. It's just the way we decide to display and present it that will be differently um, or different, not an adverb in that scenario. Um, so yeah, um, we'll, we'll kind of build it block by block, um, which is what I would like to see us do with all of our products. Um, we don't always get there, um, but kind of trying to move in that direction so that uh, we can, you know, learn as we go um, and make adjustments as we go. You know, uh, you all as the users would be able to provide feedback, you know, to each new feature that gets built onto, you know, what we might say is new marketplace uh, without losing any functionality of what we might call old marketplace, right? Until the day comes where we say, okay, we're ready to go. Um, you know, this thing's fully featured, it's complete. Most people are using this instead of the old one. Uh, we can now just go ahead and turn off the old one and just use this one. Um, but that would be further down the line. So that kind of gets at your timeline question. Um, I wouldn't expect to start seeing any small piece of this before the fall um, and probably more toward winter. So we're really looking at 2023, um, you know, as kind of a goal date for, you know, when we'd be talking about, yeah, um, it's not the thing that we're going to work on next, uh, hope it's, it's more something that I'm thinking about maybe trying to do down the line. Um, so that's where we're at on that. Uh, Lucy, what is next land journey? Um, so we're, we're we want to overhaul our land journey. Uh, so yeah, land store, linen homes, all of it. How we get you, how we get you land, how you find land, how you buy it, how you rent it, who you rent it from. Yeah, maybe even user auctions, although probably not, but maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I don't want to bring it back. I will tell you a sneaky story here. I'm the one that killed user auctions. Um, that was, that was my call. So I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really want to bring back user options, but if that's um, if it turns out we can implement it in a better way um, that is useful um, and and brings in you know revenue to compensate for the work that it requires to uh, to maintain it, maybe not going to take it off the table. We are at time. This is it. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate this. Um, I love talking about Marketplace. Um, I like talking about what the future could be. Um, that's where I'd like to keep these meetings uh, going forward. Uh, I think it's useful to kind of talk about what we have been doing um, and what we're planning to do. But I think it's more useful for me to get an idea of what y'all want. Um, you know, what are you looking for? I'm going to give you a preview of what I'm thinking, you know? So basic strategy is, you know, hey, what about Marketplace? What if we built it from the ground up? What would that look like? So that's the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about these days. So thanks, everybody. I will see you all next month.